Hey, thanks so much for clicking on this video and welcome to the haves and the have nots review here on YouTube. If you're a fan of Tyler Perry, you've come to the right place. Be sure to click that subscribe button as well as the bell notification icon. That way you don't miss out on any new content on the channel. And also check me out on these social media platforms and links in the description below will lead you to my Twitter, Instagram, Facebook group, and Facebook page. Once again, thanks for joining in and enjoy the video. All right, have and have not fans, and uh, this video is, and I, I say this a lot, but more of an open discussion, but when I say open discussion, I literally mean it because uh, I don't even know the length of this video. I have some notes in front of me, but you know, as the pastor says, you know, we're going to let the spirit uh, lead and we'll follow. It doesn't matter how long it's going to take, but I, I really wanted to do like a, uh, like a dissection of the characters here of Candace and Veronica. Uh, the quote unquote bad bitch, candy cane, ice queen, simple bitch, a uh, demon, Satan spawn, the devil himself. I mean, so many names for these characters, uh, either given by number nine by them, given to themselves or by other characters and well, some by the fans themselves. But uh, r really, you know, and I've made it pretty clear on the channel that I'm not big fans of these characters anymore because of the fact that even though their actions might be flashy, some of them are a bit repetitive, redundant, ridiculous. I don't even know why I'm using R words right now, but it's just like these characters should definitely just move on with their lives because at this point, Veronica and Candace could be doing so well. I mean, Veronica's already well off, but I mean... This is a stage in your life when you should just be not just sitting on your laurels, but just moving on to the next level. And same thing with Candace. I mean, being hung up on this money is ridiculous. Just like Veronica being hung up on. Well, excuse me, not even hung up on, but because she hasn't even accepted the fact that Jeffrey is gay. Um, just moving on to just, hey, Jeffrey can live his life and, you know, her and David are separated. So just leave it at that. But. It, it's kind of like, you know, I don't, I kind of had this feeling when I was younger, like whenever my, my sister hit me or whatever, it's kind of like, or even so, like somebody else, like, let's say they punch me. I'm going to be mad and I want to hit you back as long as where you punch me is still sore until that feeling goes away. Then I want you to feel what I felt. That's kind of what I think Veronica's going through right now. Candace is another case. She just, Candace just hasn't grieved the death of her son while Veronica just hasn't accepted the sexuality of her son. Both have a bad habit of blaming everyone in their lives for their problems, except for looking at what they've done, what they've done or haven't done, which led to the consequences of their actions. I mean, with Candace, it's pretty much blaming Hannah for, you know, what happened to Quincy Jr. and even Benny. Then moving on to Veronica, I mean, with her speeches, which are good speeches, but when you think about it, they're just justifications in her twisted mind as to everyone is against me and there's no there's no good black men out there and yada, yada, yada. But you don't realize you're a crazy ass black woman. So there's that who just loves control. But at the very core, I think you really got to go back to the beginning of what made these characters the way they are and like. You, you know the basics, I think, with Veronica, at least on the series, on the series, not pre-have and have-nots, what really made her snap was when Jeffrey came out at the ending of season one, which caused a rift in her marriage during season two because her and David both had opposing views on how to handle it. But one could argue that the cracks in the foundation that I do believe were already there began to grow in season one during the episodes, you know, like, what is it? My name is Veronica. When she pretty much found out that David was lying to her in order to cover up Jim's affair with Candace, because she even had him followed earlier in the season. So technically speaking, Veronica was the one to create the beginning stages of distrust because of her paranoia, thinking that David was having an affair with Candace. When in reality, he was just delivering the car for Jim to Candace at the law school. So remember, because of David's quote unquote strange behavior, Veronica had him followed, but then jokingly told him, oh, I had you followed because I thought you had an affair with Candace. And then he was pissed off at that. But then she found out the truth about the affair and then how Benny got in jail due to David's actions and 
Yeah, things weren't looking good. I mean, even in, like, literally, go back to season one, and you'll see that the small cracks in their foundation were beginning to grow, but then the cracks began to form many, uh, like, holes in the cracks that if you weren't careful, you would fall through when Jeffrey's sexuality came to the question. And even furthermore, did the gap widen when Maggie Day came into the equation Veronica's initial senses of adultery or attraction, Maggie's attraction to David were accurate, but not so accurate were her accusations that they slept together. So really, Veronica's behavior is the result of her reaction to Jeffrey and David, not because of them. I guess it's the best way to put it. In uh, Candace's case, let's just flip over. It was, I, I mean, she's given uh, parts of her backstory to multiple characters. I feel what really set Candace apart is the fact that we know she was molested when she was a young girl by one of her mother's, mm, I, I wouldn't even say boyfriends, but male escapades, so to speak. And I feel like having, and I'm not really a psychologist on this, and I, it really makes me uncomfortable to even talk about this subject because it disgusts me that there are sickos out there that would rob a child's innocence. It's just like inexcusable. But maybe at that young age, you know, not only did she feel betrayed by her mother and having her innocence taken away from her, I feel like that might explain why Candace has it in for almost every man she encounters. Not to mention, uh, she always wants that control because, to be honest, she was in a situation at a younger age where she was not in control. And then all things leading up to being resentful of her mother, why they don't have nice things, you know, living down in the rundown section of the town. And then as she grew up in the street, she learned new tricks of the trade and began to, um, I guess you could say, build up her war chest, so to speak. And that eventually led to Quincy and whatnot. But I feel like the Candace story, while I don't like her character now, at least we do have foundations as to why she's doing what she's doing. But with Veronica, this is why we definitely need the backstory or maybe when she was younger, did she go through a similar phase? Because I'm not, I mean, I did, I've done videos of her. Was she a lesbian? Was her mom a lesbian? What, what, what Did I do a video about her being raped? I feel like I did. I don't know. But I don't remember. But also, she did give a little bit of insight in the last episode about how in her 20s and 30s, she let David run the show. But then in the four, when in their 40s, she began to take control. But David wasn't for that. I, I'm not saying that Veronica is lying. But keep in mind, whenever she tells these kinds of stories and gives these kinds of speeches, she's giving them from her perspective. And to... Hey, DC Comics reference here, like when it comes to the Joker, who his true origin, we still don't know. Like if you read the classic Killing Joke, which is an awesome story, by the way, not the animated movie, but forget that ever existed. It's kind of like, you know, if I had to remember my past, I would make it multiple choice because he can't really remember for himself. In his own mind, he writes his own story. I feel like I was that saying, like everyone is the hero of their own story. That's Veronica. That's Veronica. Everyone else is the enemy, but she's the hero of her own story. Uh, and it's just creating villains as well. I mean, they say that in TV shows too. So that's what makes the Veronica character compelling, but it's gotten a bit stale due to the point that we really don't know the origins of, you know, what it was like for her growing up and whatnot. I mean, that's just my take on it. So I, I guess this video, thankfully, isn't as long as I thought it would be. I thought it would be like 20 some minutes, but I, I guess that, when you really think about it, we kind of know why these characters are the way they are. Keep in mind, this is me using what we've learned from the show itself, as well as my own perspective as a viewer, pretty much someone on the outside looking in. Even though they've been through all this stuff, I don't think it excuses Candace sending thugs after her mother, Veronica nearly killing her ex-husband, and pretty much like, I don't even know what to call what she's done to Jeffrey. I mean, harassment, isolation, um, disowning that, that just like, I feel like there isn't a word that 
is a culmination of all those things and everything else she's done and put into one solid word just to describe how she's acted towards her son. Is, is it one of those situations where Tyler Perry has written such a homophobic mother that if there's somebody that is even remotely um, homosexual or hasn't come out to their parents, they could say, well, my mom like treated me bad, but at least she wasn't a Veronica. I, I've always been kind of curious about that. I, I don't know. But yeah, um, that's my take on the two characters. Like I said, it doesn't really make me like them more, but in a way it kind of helps me understand them a little bit more because the show really hasn't done a good job of really diving into these characters enough to make me care about them. That's just my two cents. But when it comes down to these lovely ladies, I mean, Tinka and Angela do amazing with these roles. In the comments below, explain to me, what do you feel made these women, and I will admit they are strong black women regardless, but I do feel like it's pretty weak of them to just hang on to something they should have let go of a long time ago. Candace with this money, not to mention her street life and Veronica letting her family go. It's just like, you don't have to accept it, but just leave them the hell alone. That's my take. But subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And guys, really, for real, I really hope to have some good discussions in the comments below.